Greetings, greetings, brothers and sisters. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Uh, just to let you all know that today is Pentecost Day. It's the anniversary of the day of Pentecost. Today is May the 28th, the fifth month, um, the 28 days. Um, two, sorry, four times seven, that's 28. God's perfect number. The 28. <clears throat> and so it's a day, my remnant brothers and sisters, to cry out to the Lord for the latter rain. It's, it was prophesied in Joel. It's for us. Uh, but, but I want you to highlight this as we go further into the video. If you don't believe, you will not receive. God says, ask for rain. The latter rain is for us. It's coming. But God told me in previous videos to tell you, ask. As he told me, ask for rain. We have to ask. Ask and it shall be given. Let me continue. Now, we had our last Bible study um, Thursday night. And um, <clears throat> that Bible study was, 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 was a very good Bible study. Heated topics came up. I mean, questions were asked. And I mean, it was such a good Bible study. The number was good. You know, I believe that it has been one of the, the largest number of people we had. Uh, and uh, this, this, this talk on tongues, you know, <clears throat> the importance of tongues, the place of tongues, these things came up. And um, I believe that today is the anniversary of Pentecost. What, what took place in the upper room. And my remnant brothers and sisters, please watch this video. Because the Lord has been speaking to me. The Lord has more to show. Especially to those who don't believe. It's for everyone. There's a lie that is going around my remnant brothers and sisters. That tongues is not for everyone. It, it's a lie from the pit of hell. And many of the believers who I love. Many of my, my remnant family, who I dearly and truly love, has believed this lie. And I believe that the antidote for lies is, is, is the Word of God. And if the Word of God cannot help a believer, then I honestly don't know what can. Bless the name of Jesus. So I'm going to just go back in the Word, just a few verses to point something out significant concerning, hallelujah, this lie that the enemy has been spreading across the body of Christ. And I'm going to let you know why this lie has been spreading also. So please watch this video. There are questions like, um, did Jesus speak in tongues? And, and, and there were talk about others brought up I believe an individual mentioned that they see people who perform miracles, who pray for people and something happens and they have never spoken in tongues. How can this be? All these things are going to be dealt with in this video. Just stay with me, my remnant brothers and sisters. And as, and as always, talk back to me in the comment section. Bless the name of Jesus. Now, what I want to do first, my remnant family, is this. Um, hallelujah. I want to look at Deuteronomy 29, 29. Bless the name of Jesus. Deuteronomy 29, 29. It says, it says, Hallelujah. Bless the name of Jesus. The secret things belong unto God, the Lord. Hear this? The secret things belong unto the Lord our God. But those things which are revealed belong unto us and to our children forever. That we may do all the words 
of his law. This is such a good way to start, my brothers and sisters. The secret things, that means that where the Bible is silent, it belongs to God. Bless the name of Jesus. But those things which are revealed belong unto us and to our children forever. And we may do all the words of his, of, of his law. Whatsoever is written in the word, whatsoever we can find in the word. Bless the name of Jesus. That is for us. And so, the secret things. Now, there is something about God that I found very interesting where back in Babylon, and this is very important, in Daniel chapter 2, the, 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 the men who were not of God, these pagan men, had a knowledge of God. And we can find that in Daniel chapter 2, verse 11. It says, because this king got a dream, and nobody could um, figure out the dream because he forget it. And he expect that they would, he, he told them, you are the magicians. You are the wise men of this land. And so I don't remember the dream, and I, I am expecting you to tell me the dream. Tell me the dream that I dream. Remind me of the dream that I dream and also interpret the dream. What an ask. How oh, can somebody ask such a thing? But this king was, 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 was crazy enough to ask for such a thing. I don't remember my dream, but I'm asking you to remember my dream and, and, and interpret my dream. And if you don't, I'm going to kill you. That, that was what the king said my brothers and sisters. And, you know, <clears throat> the word of God says, and it is a rare, sorry. The, so, one of the wise men, the astrologers, they were talking. They, they said to the king, verse 11, and it is a rare thing that the king required. This is weird. And there is none other that, that can show it before the king, this ask is too big for us. He says, except the gods, the only person who can show it before the king is the gods. Who are they talking about? Our God, the I am that I am. Bless the name of Jesus. He says, whose dealing, <clears throat> this is the key part, whose dealing is not with flesh. Only one, this wise king's men, you know, the magicians and stuff, he admit before the king. None of us can um, give what you ask. Only the gods. And his dealing is not with the flesh. What does that mean? His dealing is... The, with the spirit this God he moves by the spirit he deals with the spirit flesh cannot please this God he, he has nothing to do with the flesh the flesh is an enemy concerning him and so why did I go there is to let you understand that if you are just walking in the flesh, you will not fulfill the will of God. If you are walking in the flesh, you will not endure the things that are now and the things that are coming. Because the word of God says, it's not by might, nor by power, but it's by his spirit. Bless the name of Jesus. And so, the enemy is spreading a lie for many to believe that they have moved from one stage to the next. They have moved from one stage to the next. But my, my dear brothers and sisters, 
Let me go more into the word. Jesus told the disciples, he says, I must go. Because if I don't go, I will not, um, the comforter will not come. That, that transition, that, that, that change of, of, of the Holy Spirit coming up on the prophets. God had a new plan. The new thing was for the Holy Spirit to come and indwell in men. The indwelling power from an eye. Bless the name of Jesus. And so, when, when, when Jesus went, before he left, he told them, he said, tarry. And, and this is the day that, 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 that is celebrated. It's the anniversary, bless the name of Jesus, of Pentecost. Jesus told the disciples, he says, tarry. Tarry here. Don't leave from this place until you receive what I promised. What was the promise? The promise was the gift. The promise was the gift. There's no S on it. It was the gift, my remnant brothers and sisters. And you have many gifts with the S. The gift of healing, word of wisdom, gift of tongues, gift of interpretation, gift of miracle, all these things. But my remnant brothers and sisters, as I share with the believers in Bible study, there cannot be no gifts without the gift. If you don't receive the gift, how will you be, um, how will the gifts manifest through you if you have never received the gift? The question is, can you, believe, can you be a believer but you don't receive the gift? Can you be a believer and you don't receive the gift? Can you be loyal? Can you be faithful? Can you be devoted? But yet still you have not yet received the gift. It's here in the Bible, my brothers and sisters. Cornelius was a devoted man. A matter of fact, Cornelius was so devoted more than many of us in today's church. He was more disciplined. He was more sincere. But something was lacking concerning Cornelius. And so, for, for me, Cornelius was a believer, a devoted man. But there was some, Cornelius, in spite of that, he did not receive the gift. And for the gifts to manifest, you must receive. So you can be a believer in church for years, 50 years, 60 years, and you have never received the gift. But you're a believer. But you're a Christian. According to what the word of God says. Bless the name of Jesus. No, 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 no. When we look at Acts 2. Jesus told them, go. Tarry. No, you have over 120 people that went into the upper room that day. My brothers and sisters. That moment, and they tarried there, including Mary, the mother of Jesus, as we would call her. Bless the name of Jesus. She was there. No, the Bible says that two, two things to describe the setting. They were in one place, they were in one accord. This is a good place to start. They were in one place, and they were in one accord. My dear beloved um, remnant brothers and sisters. No, that means that they were in the upper room, which represents the heavenlies. Bless the name of Jesus. They went into the upper room and they were in one accord. What one accord means? One accord basically is saying that everybody had the same desire. Everybody had the same mindset. Everybody had the same agenda, the same motive. 
There was nothing different about them. They were in one accord. Everybody was believing for the same thing. No, today, what is happening with this lie? You have one set that believe it's for us. You have one set that believe it's not for us. You have one set believe that um, only some will speak. And you have others that believe that when the Holy Ghost comes, you must speak. There's a division in this view, in this belief. But these all were believing that it's for us. The gift that is coming. And so when the Holy Ghost came on the day of Pentecost, the Bible tells that every single one in the upper room, upper room, received the Holy Ghost, speaking in new tongues. They were speaking in new tongues. My remnant brothers and sisters. And why, why others were in the festive, um, enjoying the festive season on the outside, this public holiday, why pe people were drawn to this event? Why the attention was now turned to the upper room? by those on the outside was not only the noise is because of the kind of people who were up there and speaking languages that everyone in the area could hear their own language coming from the upper room and so they asked the question are not these men Galileans It's like, it's like we are from Jamaica and we are in America, in New York and we are praying in the up, somewhere, the two-story or three-story. But, but, but it's, it's the 4th of July and everybody's enjoying themselves, celebrating the 4th of July. And um, just to announce, uh, this 4th of July, um, based on what I see coming, you may be celebrating, many will be celebrating um, the cashless system that is on its way. So, which is returning to slavery, just to point that out. Um, so we are in, in, in the upper room celebrating, tarrying, crying out unto the Lord, all Jamaicans. <coughs> But all of a sudden, there's a noise in, 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 that, in that room. And all of us start to speak in tongues. All of us start to speak in tongues. My remnant brothers and sisters. And eventually, those from Puerto Rico, the Hispanics, start to hear that Spanish those from Japan start to hear Japanese. Those from <clears throat> um, Kenya start to hear their language. Those from Nigeria start to hear their language. Those from France start to hear. Those from Germany start to hear their language. Now watch this. It would be the same response. Respond. Are not these Jamaicans? But everyone in the ear, no matter where they're from, they are hearing their language. This was the number one sign that showed that something extraordinary, something out of this world has taken place. It, this was the number one sign. This was the initial sign. A bunch of Galileans. Many of them were not bright. They were unlearned. The only school they know was to sit at Jesus' feet. No, 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 no. All receive. Now, my remnant brothers and sisters, wherever in the Bible you can find a pattern. I've said this already. 
I'm going to say it again. When you can find something that takes place in the Bible more than once, you find it two times, that's confirmation. But you find it three times, four times. Come on. My remnant brothers and sisters, God help us. At the birth of the New Testament church, this was because this day, this day, the day of Pentecost, Acts 2, was the birth of the New Testament church. Bless the name of Jesus. This was when the, 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 the ribbon was cut for the new church. And so, upon the Jews came the Holy Ghost. They all speak. Now, when Acts 10 come about, we are Cornelius, a devoted man. And God saw his devotion. God saw how hungry and thirsty was Cornelius. According to the word that says, Blessed are they who hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. And the Lord released Peter. You know, the Lord strategically set this meeting up. The Bible says, when Peter was true speaking to the people, bless the name of Jesus, the Bible says that not just Cornelius, but his entire household, that means his family, even his servants, neighbors, they all were baptized with the Holy Ghost, speaking in tongues. How did they know? How did they know? Because those who were of the circumcision, that means those who were of the Jews who was watching, this is how they knew that the, 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 the Gentiles have received the Holy Ghost because they speak. This was the very same sign. All of them. All of them. Because, and when I read, um, when I read this in Acts, in Acts um, chapter 10, there's something that really stood out to me. Oh, why is the Lord Jesus is? Because if, they, if, the, if those of the circumcision has never seen the sign, they would have never believed to this day that, that the Gentiles are engrafted. But because they saw the very same that took place, at the first ribbon cutting. And so the Jews received first. Then the Gentiles received first. And there was no difference. And if there was no difference, how could they deny that even the Gentiles receive the infilling of the Holy Ghost? The Bible specifically says, those of the un uncircumcision, they saw that they all speak. That, the, that was written as evidence. Bless the name of Jesus. No, it didn't stop there, my remnant brothers and sisters. Stephen was doing a, a, a um, not Stephen, sorry. Philip was doing a great job in evangelism. Many got saved. And he baptized many in the name of the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Many. But my remnant brothers and sisters, when Peter and John, who were elders in the apostle movement, they were the elders, they heard of the good news, and, and Peter and John, they hasted to the place where Philip was doing such a great work, to God be the glory. The Bible says that the first question Peter asked, now since you have believed, since you have been baptized, have you received the Holy Ghost? Why? Why did if this was not important? If if it was a case where from your from, from your baptized you have the Holy Spirit, you're filled with the Holy Spirit. You, you know, you know, because I believe that when you get saved, you get a measure of the Holy Spirit, but you're not filled. The cup is not filled. You see, that is why you know we have a song that says. 
Fill my cup, Lord. I lift it up, Lord. Come and quench this thirsting of my soul. Blessed are they who hunger and thirst after righteousness. Help us, Jesus. Help us. And so Peter says, since you have been baptized, you have been baptized already. And it's the same question I would ask you today. Since you have been baptized, are you filled with the Holy Spirit? Have you received the Holy Ghost? Peter asks. It was so important that that's the, the first thing he asks. And the men look on him and says, and Peter and John and says, we, have, we, 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 have, we haven't ever heard of such a Holy Ghost. We, we have never heard about any Holy Ghost. And it is so sad where many believers in the world today, they have never heard of such thing. They, they have never even received a teaching like what I'm doing now on this platform because their shepherds don't believe it's for them. The shepherds, the shepherds only believe that as long as they receive what these men, that Peter, sorry, that um, Philip evangelized, as long as you're baptized, you're okay. Many believers are sitting in the kingdom, in the body of Christ, with that belief because of how they were indoctrinated. That, 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 that you are baptized, you're good. You're filled with the Holy Spirit. Peter asks, since you have been baptized, are you filled with the Holy Spirit? These men says we have never heard of such thing called the Holy Ghost. And the Bible says that Peter lay his hand. And it was quite a lot. It was a lot. Because if it wasn't such a massive um, cut of, the, you know, we call it, Jesus says you'll become fishers of men. It was, if it wasn't such a great catch, the news spread abroad. Peter heard of the great work. That means it was many. And the Bible says that Peter, when they, when they said, we have never heard of such a, um, a Holy Ghost, Peter laid his hand on them, Peter and John, and they prayed, and they all received the Holy Ghost. And the Bible says, specifically again, they all, all means all, there was none that was standing there and says, oh, there was no indication that some received and some didn't. All were speaking in tongues. That's the evidence. And so, my brothers and sisters, if you read so, so many different times, more than two times in the Bible, where those that were filled with the Holy Ghost all speak. If you have any spiritual ambition, if you have, you, uh, look, I don't look here. I'm not being arrogant, but honestly, when it comes on to God's truth, I don't care about who's going to unsubscribe. I don't care about the numbers. A matter of fact, if I had known how to remove on my phone, you know, what shows how many subscribers I have, I would remove it. You know, just not to pay that the number in the mind. All I care about is the truth of God. What the Bible says. If, if we have, as believers, if we have any form of spiritual ambition, just as we have earthly ambition to achieve this and to achieve that, we have the ambition to, to, to get an education, we have the ambition... To, 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 to own a house. We have the ambition, you know, one day to own a car. If we have any spiritual ambition, my, my, my brothers and sisters, how come we will know of these reoccurrences, this pattern, but yet still we says, okay, I'm going to sit back because it's, it's, it, it, it's not for all of us. And so even though I see this happening, over and over. It's not, it's not for me. It's not for me. It's not for me. Not everybody's going to speak. It's not for me. You know what the enemy is doing, my remnant brothers and sisters? He's conditioning you. 
is conditioning you not to maximize in your full potential in the Lord. Because without this gift, the gifts will not manifest, my remnant brothers and sisters. I ask, I, I, let me ask this question. Let me ask this question. Have you ever seen in your life demons being cast out of an individual before your eyes and that person who cast out the demons have never speak? Whether that pastor, that bishop, whoever never speak I've been in church for years and I've never seen I've never seen where God used a vessel to cast out demons and they have never speak. Never. Help me, Holy Spirit of the living God. My remnant brothers and sisters, is the devil conditioning many believers to walk powerless. And so in Bible study, um, I heard I heard persons say, but we have seen persons who pray for people and, 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 and the pain went and all these things and, and, and they, they have never speak in tongues. My remnant brothers and sisters, Let, up, let us be careful of how we see things. Because we serve a God that we cannot keep in the box. Meaning, God will use anyone at any time to do a specific work. How do I know this? He used a donkey to speak to his prophet. He used a drunk crow to feed his prophet or a crow. He used a great fish to transport his prophet. He anoint a pagan king for a specific work. He anointed King Cyrus in Isaiah 45 for a specific work. So should we all say that Cyrus was 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 what, what, what was in the place where he should be and, and, and it, Cyrus was filled with the Holy Ghost and, 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 and Cyrus was all that. No. And so I believe that a person that is a Christian a matter of fact, let me take it even further. I believe that a person who is not a Christian but believe that there is a God can sincerely go before the Lord and pray for his daughter. And his little girl sit there and she have a knowledge of God and she believe. And the little girl exercises faith. She believe and that father believe. And that little girl is healed. It's possible. So are you going to walk away and say that he is filled with the Spirit of God because the little girl received healing? That would be naive, my remnant brothers and sisters. That's not how it works. That's not how it works. The Bible says in, 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 in Corinthians, the Bible says in Corinthians 14 verse 20, 21 to 22. In the law it is written, with men of other tongues and other lips will I speak unto this people. We have seen the manifestation from Acts 2 on the day of Pentecost. And yet for all that will they not hear me. For all that they will not hear me. Said the Lord. Verse 22. Wherefore. Tongues are for a sign. What does the Bible say? 
tongues are for, are for a sign. Not to them that believe. It's not for those who believe. But to them that believe not. It's for a sign for the unbelievers. And one of the, and this is the, the initial evidence. Bless the name of Jesus. This is the initial evidence to the unbeliever. That here is a, 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 a child of God, a, a, a servant of the Lord. It's a sign unto the unbelievers. No, no, no. This is what the word of the Lord says. My remnant brothers and sisters. This is what the Lord says. And so. Somebody else also said in the Bible study. And I'm going down. They said. But why, why should we all expect to speak in tongues when, when Jesus, <coughs> when Jesus never speak in tongues? For me, I don't know much about that. Because on the cross, um, he did speak words that was causing different opinions of what he said. In that great congregation because it was a big event many were there and many were wondering did he say this did he say that and, and and you know the fact that many were wondering bless the name of Jesus it tells that you know it's, it's those words were unfamiliar bless the name of Jesus no no with that aside though because many will have that as, as a weak evidence to say that Jesus did speak. And as I was meditating, the Lord, through the Holy Spirit, ministered to me about this. My remnant brothers and sisters, why have we been given the opportunity to speak? Why were, why were we even given our prayer language? Because not all is going to speak every day. Not all is going to... There are those in the body of Christ that only speak once. And they have never speak again. They, they only speak when they were receiving the infilling of the Holy Ghost. What am I talking... When it comes down to the infilling of the Holy Ghost, what am I talking about? My brothers and sisters, you must all know of a whistling, a whistle, a whistling keckle. That kettle that you put on your stove. And when the water reaches boiling point, it whistles. No, my remnant brothers and sisters, here's an analogy. When you light the stove, you put that pot on. The water is cold. But when the pot goes on the fire, on the stove, the pot starts to experience something different. Meaning the beginning of a believer. You know, somebody just got baptized. Somebody just got saved. Even though you have persons who received the Holy Ghost the very same day they got saved. But it does not change the fact that this is a process. It's a process. Now, when the pot goes on, you're a Christian. But there's no sign how truly hot you are. Even if it's a glass, the, the, the pot is made of glass. The water is still. The heat is going, even though I never see a whistling pot that is made of glass. And so the ones I know, you can't see it. So I'm going to stick to the ones that I know. And so the water is there. But there is no evidence that the water is ready. And so maybe you're in the kitchen, you're, you're mopping while the, the kettle is on, you're washing the dishes. But as soon as the water is ready, you know you have the tea bag already on the cup, waiting for the water to be ready. You have your coffee or whatever. And you're doing your own thing 
Even forgetting that the, 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 the pot is on the stove. But you know what, my brothers and sisters? Whenever the pot reach its boiling point, it's whistling. It's going to whistle. The evidence that the pot, the evidence, you need an evidence at least once. And I would encourage any believer, if you are filled with the Holy Ghost and you are hungry for the gift, because when you receive the gift, then you have the, 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 the gift of tongues that can add to it. Why, why is it important? It's a prayer language. Jude, the book of Jude says, talks about the last days. He says we must be building up our most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Praying in the Holy Ghost. Praying in your prayer language. Praying through the Spirit. Can you pray in the Spirit without speaking? Yes. Before I even receive that question. Yes, you can. But that, 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 that peak, the heights of heights in prayer is in your prayer language. Because your prayer language confused the enemy. When you pray in your prayer language, it's, it's, it, that level is, 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 is at the peak. It confuses the, 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 the enemy in the spirit realm. If you have anything about the spirit realm, if we have any knowledge about principalities and powers and in, that, that is in the ear, bless the name of Jesus. And so, back to Jesus. Jesus was anointed without measure. Jesus was 100% God. 100% flesh. Jesus did not need a prayer language to go to his father. He did not need tongues to speak. When he prayed, Jesus' prayer was automatically um, Jesus' prayer was automatically um, he was communicating with his father. There was no barrier between Jesus because he was 100% God 100% flesh we, we in this case we are we cannot be compared to the messiah Jesus tells us about um marriage he never got married there are, there are things that Jesus instructs us to do where he, he never got involved in. Jesus, Jesus never needs. He never needs the gift of tongues. He never needs this weapon for warfare in prayer. Because, my brothers and sisters, when I saw a foul spirit comes in my house a few months ago, a Friday night, after prayer, and I, I, I came up from my grandmother's house, and there was a, a funny smell, a green smell in the house. I shared it in a video. But, you know, I was just, I went to the bathroom, brushing my teeth, just doing my own thing. I saw the shadow of the person pass. I honestly thought it was one of my children. But then when I came around the, the, the back part of the house, bless the name of Jesus, I saw when the, 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 the spirit walked through the door and entered into somewhere else. And you know, you know, you know, my remnant brothers and sisters, I just started speaking. I, it just, it just, the Bible says that when the enemy comes in like a flood, then the spirit of God will lift up a standard against it. It was a me that was trying, you know, and I have never done a video. 
and I try to speak in tongues to impress. I have never been praying and, and I try to go off in tongues to impress. These things, you see, it's the Spirit of God that gives us the utterance. And so I have people on this, I, I have people who have unsubscribed. I have persons who have unsubscribed from my channel because they said, if I can I was threatened. One individual told me that if you continue to talk, share in your video, and, 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 and if you speak, then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave your, your platform. I told them. I said, all my videos are understood. Whenever I do a video, the content Everyone's supposed to have an understanding because I speak in the words that you can understand. So those, those moments when, when the Holy Ghost comes upon me, it's not for you. It's unto the Lord. Whenever I'm praying, bless the name of Jesus, my prayer is not for you. Yes, there are times when we don't want to to, to hear what you're saying so that we can say amen in agreement. But my remnant brothers and sisters, speaking, <coughs> underline this word and I'm going to close, speaking. Right now I'm speaking to you. I'm speaking to you. But if I should go off in tongues, as the Holy Spirit give me utterance, I'm speaking still. It's my very same mode. You have persons who sing in tongues. It's the very same mode. You have persons who pray in tongues. It's the very same mode. But my remnant brothers and sisters, when an individual sing worship in tongues unto the Lord, it's unto the Lord. It's not for you.